Hi, Ed Diaz here. In today's video, we're gonna learn all about sequencing and how to create a pattern in real time. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna just choose a scene. It doesn't matter what scene. And I'm gonna press single tone. Remember, single tone temporarily clears out the scene that I'm using uh, so I have a clean slate. And I'll go ahead and put zone view in four. Remember, we could do four, eight, or 16. But I'll go ahead and use uh, four for right now. But this screen doesn't even really matter. So I'm gonna go into the pattern section of the sequencer and we're gonna take a look at all the patterns that are available to us. Uh, and so I can have a pattern and I can go ahead and record up to 64 measures per pattern and then I can put them together. So first thing we need to do is actually go in here and start creating a pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna probably start with drums. That's very common. A lot of us do like to start with drums. Uh, make sure I'm set here. There we go. Great, so let's go ahead and start recording the drums using uh, the pattern in real time. So I'll press record, and let me turn this down for a second. I get some options here that I can do. One, I can do step recording, or I can do TR rec. Uh, step recording, we can actually go ahead and input each note one by one, uh, you know, as uh, in, in more of a musical kind of term, just like a notation kind of way, we could do that. Uh, but I don't think we need to really necessarily do that in this case. We're going to show in real time. TR rec recording we're going to show in the next video. Uh, I can go ahead and record up to 64 measures. 64 measures for this particular pattern. I'll go ahead and just do one at this time. Uh, also, I can actually come into here and do mix and new. What this means is every time I start recording, if it's set on new, it's going to create a new pattern. Just go right down A through H that way. Uh, but I want to go ahead, since I'm going to be doing drums, I want it to go ahead and mix. I want to go ahead and do a bunch of overdubbing right here. So I like to use mix myself. Next, I'm going to choose Input Quantize. I'll go ahead and press Enter so you can see. Press Enter again so you can see some more. I can choose Grid or Shuffle. I'm going to choose a grid, maybe a 16-note uh, grid. And as you see there, I get my options where I can choose uh, if, whether it's 16th note or quarter note or whatever. I can go 32 second, uh, 30 second. So I'm going to do 16th, and I'll leave the strength at 100. Great. As you can see here, I can change the time signature, uh, whatever time signature I want to do. We can get pretty crazy here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have it four beats in a measure, and the note value will be quarter note. Just very uh, our common time right there. Uh, next, I will go into count in, which I will end up using a wait note, which means as soon as I touch the pedal or the keyboard, it's going to immediately start recording. I'll leave this off for now. Uh, and then if we want to hear, I could, if I had a rhythm pattern up, I could go ahead and have the rhythm pattern uh, synced with this. So as soon as I start recording, it can do that. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put a loop record switch on. So it just keeps on, keeps on looping back and forth. So I, uh, it won't stop after one measure. It'll just keep looping and I can keep adding. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get into here and we're going to go ahead and do one measure counting. I'll turn it up. Okay, and we have it set. And if I want to go ahead and set that tempo, maybe I want 107. 107, here we go. And let's go ahead and start. Uh, I think we're good. Let's start. Great. Great thing is that I can go ahead and hit record end. and find what I want to find, the instrument I want to find, and then I can press start and wait for it. It's recording. Now it's going to loop, and I can just come in as needed. Great. Record in. That sounds fine. Let's go ahead and start. And I might stop there. So let's go ahead and press stop. Or before I press stop, let's go ahead and say I wanted to try some other things.
if I made a mistake, I can always press the erase right here. I can erase the one wrong note or a range of wrong notes. And look, sounds like that's something I gotta catch it. There it is. Make sure I caught that wrong note. And once it's done, press close. And now I can press stop. All right, so that quickly I just recorded so it's just the basic drums right in here. Now here's where the, uh, the patterns really come into play. I can have this pattern. Sounds great. But what if I wanted to go ahead and add to it? Maybe I like that, but maybe I wanted to add to it, but I don't want to go ahead and mess up that one. It's, it's actually very easy. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Pattern Utility. So now that I have that uh, pattern highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And now I will go ahead and paste that pattern there. So let's go ahead and paste it. Great. So now that's there. Let's exit one time. And now I should have that pattern available to play. Great. Here's the original. It's going to sound exactly the same. And go back to this pattern. There we go. All right. So now in this second pattern, I can go ahead and press record. And I'll go ahead and start because maybe I want to start adding tracks to it. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and record in, but that pattern is still ready to record. Now I can kind of look around. I can start adding to it. Here we go. It's ready. Great. Record in. There we go. Let's start. Three, four. Great, we have that. Let's go ahead and stop. So now I have two patterns available to me. I can go ahead and launch this one. I can go ahead and maybe launch this one right here. Oops, here we go. There we go. Furthermore, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and say, you know what, let's copy uh, let's copy that again. Uh, I'm going to go from the original. And I'm going to go ahead and let's stop. I'm going to go ahead and say pattern utility. I'm going to copy that pattern again. And this time I'm going to paste it. But this time we're going to edit. We're going to take instruments out rather than add. So let's exit one time so I can go ahead and trigger it. Great. Let's press uh, record. There we go. Press record. And I'll go ahead and start. All right. So now it's recording. Remember we used erase earlier. I might go ahead and want to take stuff out. Maybe I want to take out that snare drum. Let's go ahead. I think it's here. I can press erase. And let's see where it is. I think it's here. Nope. There it is. So I just took out that snare drum, hold it down, and now I have this hi-hat going. Let's take out that hi-hat. All in real time, we're just taking it out. Now I can go ahead and close, and I'll like, oh, where was that, that one thing over here? Maybe I want to add this guy. Let's go ahead and add that. Here it comes, three, four. Let's go ahead and add the 16th note right in here. So now I have another variation based off of the original. So I can go ahead and have, I can have this guy going into this one. I can have a nice breakdown. After further review, I could say, you know what? I like that 
but maybe I wanted to add something else. I could say, all right, let's go ahead and add this guy in here. I'll go ahead and start it. Make sure I have the right one selected. Cursor down. There we go. That's the one we'll be editing. Uh, let's go ahead and record again. And let's bring in this uh, conga parts. And there we go. Now I have all three. Now a nice breakdown. All right, so that is a nice basic way to go ahead and do a, a real-time record. Let's add one more part to it. Let's go ahead and maybe add, uh, we'll start this as our drums, but uh, maybe I want to go ahead and bring in maybe an electric piano. And it doesn't matter even where I start recording. I'm going to say, I want you to record uh, on this zone three, and it's going to be A3 uh, right there. So let's go ahead and choose an electric piano. I hit it twice to bring it up. I'll choose my Mark II phaser. And OK. So now I can have, let me drop it an octave just for me right here. All right, I think I'm ready to record. Let's record. Uh, on this example, maybe I want to record two measures. Wait, note, we're all set. Everything looks right. Let's try it. And after further review, maybe I don't like that part. Guess what? If I don't touch anything else first, I can go to undo. And now it's gone. So. All right. Let's try this. Maybe I want to do go down an octave. And I want to use my left hand for my bass to kind of help me with the time. Make sure I'm dead on. Okay, let's go ahead and record. Same thing. Two measures. Maybe I don't want that bass part. I can press erase and erase from here to here just to make sure I got it. And let's stop. So now we have an electric piano part with those three patterns. Very quickly. It's the same electric part. Let's do a different drums. Let's break it down. All right, so now I have these patterns. I'll leave it there. Let's add a bass part. So I'm going to go ahead and cursor over here, and I'll choose a nice bass. And let's see what we have. Maybe I'll choose an electric bass and maybe a compression, uh, compressed finger bass. All right, so let's go ahead and record with the bass now. I'm going to do two measures, wait note, and let's keep this run simple at first. Okay, that's all I needed for the bass. Maybe I don't like that bass. Let's try it again. Let's try and match that rhythm that was being played exactly. One more time. Great. So now that's set. Uh, maybe I want to go ahead and let's try another option for the bass. All right. Let's go ahead and record. Two bars. Here we go. So I now I have a couple of options for the bass. Uh, let's listen to it one more time. Okay. 
Okay, now I have that option. Let's go ahead and do another one. All right, let's go ahead and record that. Two, uh, two bars. I could do it four. It's fine. So now I have a couple of options for the bass all within the same patterns. I can have different patterns. So I can say, you know what, let's try this one. Let's try with the drums. Maybe let's try this different bass. Let's go ahead and mute the bass. Press and hold it down, and it will eventually mute. There it is. And let's bring that second one in with everybody else. Oh, wrong one. No problem. Let's bring them in with this next gun. Two, three. Let's try a jumping drum. Let's take out the electric piano. Let's break it down. So, as you can see here, I'm trying different arrangements of this particular section of the song. This this is probably going to be my intro of the song. It's just it's not really a part of the main structure. It's just the intro just so that way everybody can kind of get in the vibe before we get into the main verse section. All right, so stick with me. We're going to further develop this song using the sequencer inside the Phantom O. All right, you guys take care and we'll talk to you soon.